Hey everybody and welcome back to the Hivemind StarCraft 2 tournament. My name is Evolution Woodhouse and I am bringing you the first game of match number three between Scipio and Laser Drill. Just a reminder, next week, week number three of this tournament, we'll decide who the finalists are in the winner's bracket. Now mind you, those two people get a week off before the grand finals, or the finals and the grand finals are played at our second spring LAN on April 14th. I am pretty pumped to actually be a part of that. I am looking forward to that completely. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our players and cut the music because apparently I hit the wrong button. But spawning over here on the lower right side of GSL's Belshire Beach, we have our yellow Protoss player, Scipio, who's had a pretty, pretty dominating performance up to this point. We'll have to see if he can keep it up. Oh no. We have some chatter. We have some chatter from our blue Zerg player laser drill. Spawning on the opposite side of the map from Scipio. We're going to have to see how this game plays out. These are two very, very good players. I'm looking forward to seeing this actually just play play out. I, You know, I'm pretty pumped. Both of these players have actually been really strong throughout this entire tournament. Just some quick reminders. This is GSL's Belshire Beach. So we do see the ramp, which is kind of awkward for most players to defend. Uh, we did see General Tyler against Freaks where there was, you noticed it was a probably a three or four force field ramp instead of just a one or a two, as per usual on most Blizzard and MLG maps, especially those in our pool. This is one of the more awkward ones to defend out there. We do see Scipio getting the first scout of his opponent. I don't know what information he's actually going to take from this. He does see that there is no pool. No pool early, anyway. He does see the pool. Is he going to? No. He actually sees Laser Drill. Go ahead and look like he is going to go for a hatch first. I think he's just waiting on the money here. Not a big deal. We do see the probe continuing. It looks like he's just going to continue to scout that way. We do see the drone from Laser Drill going to go ahead and throw down that expansion right there. Opening up the production tab. He did end up going hatch first, so that is a 14 hatch. We can almost expect a spawning pool at any point now, because usually it's 14 hatch, 14 pool. The first gateway for Scipio is done, as well as the first assimilator. So that information is given to his opponent. We do see the spawning pool going down on 14 as well. Continuing just to drone up as per usual. Laser drill just going like, like a guy. He's just going at it. And forgive me, that was kind of a terrible joke. Oh no! I didn't see it. Oh well. See the cyber core going down now for Scipio as well. He is supply block, not anymore. Pool is a little ways from done yet, as is the expansion hatchery. The cyber core is just finishing for Scipio though. So at any point expect to see warp gate research as well as probably more gateways for or another pylon. Going for the pylon. I like it. Overlord just popping. First queen is on the way. First and second, actually. And two Zerglings also in production for our Zerg buddy, wanting to clear out that probe. He does scout the early expansion. Now, a lot of times this can be scary for Protoss players just because Zerg likes to expand as much as humanly possible. You see a lot of Zerg players who end up going very, very expansion heavy. If the map isn't half covered in creep, they're probably not playing their style correctly, is what I've heard. Two Zealots out now for Scipio to make sure that this is, in fact, walled off against any sort of Ling run by. See another... Oh, we see a Stargate going down. He's going one gate, Stargate. I'm not sure how the, well this is going to play out. Usually that kind of build is reserved for things that punish an early expansion from Zerg. We'll have to see if he can actually make it do that. We do see the Ling coming up here, and the Ling not actually seeing that much. Did he end up seeing... No, he didn't see anything past the main wall in the front. We do see a Roach Warren going down, though, for Laser Drill right now. The Stargate for Scipio just did finish. Just starting Warp Gate research. This is going to mean that his Warp Gate's a little bit delayed. Nothing major at this point, but it does look like he's going to go for some sort of an expand out of this. And he does. He does throw down the very early expand. 
in a lot of ways, this is a good signal to Zerg players to go ahead and take that third, but we'll have to see how they decide to play it out. And like I pointed out in some of the other matches, actually I think there's only one other match that was played on the winter that I've done. But this is a gold expansion with a rich Vespian geyser as opposed to an actual mining base as it is in the winter version. So there's just some very, very subtle differences. Stuff that's not really too terrible. We do see one Phoenix coming out right now for Scipio. We're going to have to see how well this actually plays out. Like I said, I'm, I'm accustomed to seeing two gates and a Stargate, maybe three gates and a Stargate, but never one. So we're going to have to see how well this does work out for him. Going back up here to Laser Joe's base, we do actually see the Roach Warrant is done, getting a second geyser in his main, as well as one in his natural. Throwing down a couple of spine crawlers for defense and continuing basically just to spread the creep. Like I said, at this point, I don't think it would be an overly terrible idea to go get your third expansion, considering your opponent actually is slightly behind at the moment. We do see a second Phoenix coming out as well as a robo facility so I don't know if Scipio thought he was playing against the Terran and trying to go for some sort of 1-1-1 he is getting a very very early Colossus den out right now so that is that is good that is going to help him in the long run at this point I don't actually know if Scipio no he has not scouted the Roach Warren he did see the pool go down uh, for all he knows at this point, his opponent could be going for some sort of Mutalisk play, but that is actually about to change when these two Phoenixes get back over here into the fray. Now normally, like I said, you would see a Void Ray or something like that come out to actually punish this. Ooh, and he did actually see something. He had the Overlords spot the two Phoenixes as they went by. We do see a couple of Spore Crawlers getting thrown down in the base of Laser Drill at this point. He is throwing down... It. There's a total of four of them out on the map right now. So he is actually pretty well covered. Deciding... Apparently he decided to just use those as scouting information. Which is fine. I would have preferred almost though if he would have just used hallucinations. He may pick off a couple of overlords. But the total possibility of losing this investment is not worth that risk. Because there's one phoenix down. And he also has the possibility of losing the second if that so occurs. It, it almost was a wasted investment on Scipio's part at this point. We're going to have to see how he recovers from it. Do you see a second Robo Facility? Again, I'm not so sure how I like this build. Uh, in terms of, you know, it's fine to have two Robotics Facilities on something like three bases. He is severely cutting his Gateway Army to go for something that's a little more tech heavy. Actually, a third Robo going down now for Scipio. This is actually really, really funky. I, you know, he's going to have gas to produce one round, maybe two out of it. And we do see another Phoenix coming out. So the the Phoenixes, as we can see at this point, have been kind of not worth their weight. But we're going to have to see. I mean, they did get him some scouting information. The third four laser drill also going down now, by the way. The Overseer going to go ahead and just sit over the natural. Probably going to get taken out by that Phoenix. We still see no warp gate down for Scipio. Again, I'm not so sure how I feel about this this build as a whole. You know, being able to produce... You know, he doesn't have the minerals, I guess is what I'm trying to get at at this point, to go ahead and produce off of these bases. Now, granted, he does have two Colossi on the way. He could start a third, but again... Oh, and that is a nasty Ling run by four Laser Drill. Scipio going for something crazy and allowing those Lings to run by... Hold position on those links. They are going to take out a few workers. If you look at the workers killed tab, it is seven workers killed for laser drill. I'm gonna go ahead and try and pick something off. Those two colossi are gonna pop out though and clean up most of these links. Again, like I said, I'm not sure how I feel about this play. We're gonna have to see how it plays out to begin with. As you can see, he is not producing. Okay, he is producing out of all three, but look at his money at this point. He really can't support this for any long period of time. So we're going to have to see how this plays out. The creep spread continuing for Laser Drill as well. Both players continuing just to macro up. We do see a Void Ray coming out now. But that Starport was a clear, clear indication that Laser Drill needed Corruptors of some sort. And we do see one of those on the way as well as four Roaches. You know, the, the key component to this Colossi composition that I could see of would be some sort of usage of centuries and at this point Scipio is kind of left in the dark uh, Protoss players generally live and die by their force field placement 
So this is going to be kind of hairy at times to see what actually ends up happening. The one Corruptor getting targeted by the two Phoenixes. He does scout the third of his opponent, though. Managing not to lose one of those Phoenixes. Again, this is actually kind of a scary force to run stuff into. But at the same time, we also see that, you know, there's not really that much here. Looks like there's a little more chatter. And a nope. It looks like we're clear to go. The two cannons, I don't know if I like the placement. He is way oversaturated in his natural. Getting to chrono about boost out supply block units as per usual. Like I said, at this point, the, the composition for Scipio, it'll be interesting to see how it functions together. It looks like he is going to come down here and take at least one expand, two expand. A pretty gutsy move against a Zerg player, just considering how fast they can... Uh, they can reinforce force their units and whatnot. A lot of that is channeled by the creep spread because of the very, very speed boost of creep. You see the double expansions for Scipio going down. He does need to tack down some more gateways, though. I'm, I'm going to call that one right now because the three robo play is not going to be very effective against stuff that doesn't shoot. Or not going to be very effective against stuff that shoots up. Oh, and he's, that is still, though, a lot of Colossi to go ahead and run into. Picking off one of the Phoenixes at this point. Yeah, I don't know whether this was a, you know, just an experimental build on Scipio's part, but I'm, as you can tell, kind of in shock about how it's working out. We do see this uh, this base for Laser Girl going to get picked off by these roaches. While the army for Scipio cannot respond that quickly, it is very, very immobile. Three Zerglings here trying to deny that third. He does manage to get the cancel on the fourth. The third does finish, however. And now we actually do see the, the ease of protecting this expansion and protecting your main on this map. You see this, this, this narrow little, well I shouldn't say narrow little, it's kind of big, but you see there's only two choke points that come here. And a relatively short reinforced distance should you need to defend your main. The food supply though is in the favor of laser drill right now. 135 to 117, we do see three more gateways going down. For Scipio, though, it is about, at least for me, it would be about overdue at this point to get more gateways. That that heavy, heavy Colossus count in the beginning could easily be circumvented by uh, Mutas, things like that, or this heavy, very, very heavy Corruptor grouping. You know, there's only the one Stalker and a couple of Phoenixes in here to take everything out. Laser Drill actually is going to have to be really careful about how he goes ahead and engages this. Oh, he needs to make sure he doesn't get cut off, though. This Roach is going to go ahead and poke into the main. Scipio actually sitting on a lot of money, and this is actually where more gateways could have been very, very useful at this point. We do see most of them done now. That Roach army of Laser Drill going to go ahead and get taken out, though. As we do see the vulnerability of all of those Colossi, he does go ahead and warp in four more Stalkers, though, to try and deal with that threat. The units for Laser Drill just continuing to pop out as per normal. He is going to go ahead and take this gold expansion in front of his base, though. So at this point, it actually puts a five base Zerg up against a three base Protoss. And three bases is about where Protoss wants to be. That's where they can get the most macro out of their their economy and go ahead and just make the death ball and become very, very proficient in that manner. See a lot of the pressure cannons going down for Scipio. And I call them pressure cannons because it's kind of a, uh, it's a play based on hope in a lot of ways. Uh, the cannons are not really there to stop anything. They are there mostly to provide a speed bump for your main army to get there. We do see Laser Drill going to go ahead and get that saturated, though, down there at the gold expansion. Leaving quite a few minerals up here in his main, but not that big of a deal. It looks like he has, though, almost stopped drone production completely, just having a few drones mining off of each base. We do see the scary death ball coming out now for Scipio. The supply, though, still in Laser Drill's favor. 
at 167 to 151. That is still a lot of Colossi. That is five Colossi against this primarily Roach army of... Ooh, and the... Oh, and the Voider gets taken out. You see the reinforcements coming in now. Looks like he is going to go ahead and take down all of these Colossi, though. That is a lot of Corruptors. Enough Corruptors, so much, in fact, that he could probably go ahead... Oh, and he does... Goes ahead and takes down all of those colossi. And again, we see the economy of... Well, I shouldn't say that. The economy of Scipio is not really strained that much because he's not warping in units on every cycle. It would be strained if that was the case. Do you see the Roche is getting the better concave on these stalkers at the moment? Supply right now, 161 to 102. This puts Laser Drill actually way ahead. And here we go, we do see these roaches coming in to try and push on these cannons. The cannons literally, like I said, just going to provide the speed bump until the army can get there. There's not that much of an army to defend on this. These roaches are going to go ahead and take out a bunch of stuff while they can. And, and the Corruptor is coming over now to do the damage on the Voidray. When you see the creep spread from Laser Drill is actually now getting to the point where it is kind of scary as a Protoss player to see. It's coming up now literally to his front door, making the reinforced distance on this push very, very short, making it a very, very scary, very, very easy push for the Zerg player. We do see the Corruptors continuing to take down the Void Rays as they come out. There are too many Corruptors here for those Void Rays to take out. But the Immortals doing the damage to these roaches, and we do see some micro coming out of Scipio right now to keep these immortals alive. One immortal does go down, though, and it looks like he is content to go down here and just take out the third base of Scipio. If we look back here, we do see the oversaturation is taking its toll. We see his main is no longer mining. His economy is actually kind of in the red at this point. He needed the space to stay alive, and at this point, it's not happening. See the Roach is continuing to just pick away at this base, taking out the one supply, or one unit building structure there. Going ahead and taking out the pylon to try and drop the supply of his opponent even farther. Just 153 to 113 at this point. We do see level 3 missile attacks and level 1 flyer attacks coming out now for our Zerg player. One Roach does go down, that poor Roach sliced in the face. Some changelings morphing in as well, coming around here. That is a lot of immortals for Scipio. He is going to go... And, okay. We finally do actually see it. We do see the strain on Scipio's economy. He is going to have to either transition into something like Zealot Archon or, you know, to try and force out another base to mine off of because if we look at here it is natural that mineral patch is going to be mined out he is actually almost mined out all over his base or all over his bases laser drill during this game has actually done a fantastic job of making sure that Scipio is stuck back in his base denying expansions doing all of the things that good zerg players do to make sure that the Protoss cannot get up to that death ball status. We do see supply now 171 to 122. Laser drill over Scipio. Scipio going to go ahead and do the long distance mining to try and bring in that income because he needs minerals. You see this army going ahead and pushing out now for Scipio. I don't know how effective it's going to be. Supply right now is 182 to 126. And getting the surround. Doing the beach ball in action. Laser drill. Laser drill. Getting the beach balls on. We do see a couple of feedbacks going down. The infested Terrans, though, going to come up and try and clean up this army. Apparently not not going to. Immortals on 3-2, pretty good. I would have liked to have actually seen an armor upgrade, though, instead of the shield. 
you've seen people occasionally go for shield first. I don't know if that was a fluke or if that was intentional, but I personally like to go armor first. We do see the continued long distance mining of this base for Scipio. Clearing out the creep, getting ready to drop down a Nexus for his third there though. So apparently Immortals are pretty good. Basically one-shotting all of those Infestors as they came through. And the Broodlords, oh my god, this is more than likely going to be the Death's Note for Scipio. These Broodlords coming out, he has no Stalkers. This is a weakness that I noticed in the early game. He wasn't producing very many Stalkers. Once that initial ball of Stalkers did go down, he didn't really have a whole lot left. And now, slowly but surely, these Broodlings are going to just start picking away at the Immortals and the Broodlords themselves. Here comes the big, slow push from Laser Girl. Not getting a cancel, destroying that Nexus. That is terrible. The probe's now caught in the line of fire. We do see a Ling Roach Infester build coming out of Laser Girl in game number one here on GSL's Belshire Beach. Deciding that that wasn't the right time to push out. Oh, his natural is about to go. Oh, and the broodling is coming in. He's going to try and target fire, and he does get that hatchery. That is, at this point, not that big of a, a, a downfall for the Zerg player, considering he has re-expanded to the top expansion. These immortals able to get away. The little crab hobble coming out to play. 19 kills on that immortal. 25 and 20. Those are some boss mode immortals. I will say that. Do you see this expansion? Yet again, going to get denied by laser drill. Eventually. It's always important that it happens eventually. And now we actually do see the big slow push coming out now for Laser Girl. We do see some stalkers finally coming out now for Scipio as well. And the Broodlord's in the main. Not like it's going to do a whole lot of damage. There's not much mining here at this point, but that's okay. And we do see the Broodlings just going to town on this base. The Immortals going to finally go down. The Hero Immortals going down. More Broodlords being formed. And we're going to see if we can get this Archon killed before the Broodlords more. Uh, nope, not quite. But the Archon does go down slightly thereafter. Broodlings now going ahead and going to attack that expansion. Oh, and he left some of his Broodlords unprotected. And we see that's what happens, and kids, that's why you always protect your broodlords. Take from that what you will. Again, leaving some of the broodlords unprotected from the rest of the army. The stalkers of Scipio are going to go ahead and do what they can, but I think this is too little too late. Expect a GG at any point now. We do see the broodlings coming in here. And Egad! And a little tongue face. And the GG comes out from Scipio. So with that, we actually do see Scipio dropping game one on Belshire Beach. Now, there has been a little bit of talk that this is a map that a lot of players don't play on normally. And this is true, because this is a map that obviously was made for the GSL. So it's understandable that players don't quite know where to expand or how to expand or what, you know, what to look forward to in that map. But I think Laser Drill did a fantastic job of just keeping up macro, keeping everything where it needed to be, denying expansions. I think all around it was a very good game for him. Scipio, on the other hand, I'm not quite sure what that opening build order was. Um, if it was something experimental that's worked for him on ladder, if, you know, whatever, whatever that may be. So we'll have to see come game number two on what actually happens. So with that, guys, definitely... Stay with me for game number two between Scipio and Laser Drill. I'll be back in a second.